What's up, my friends? I'm Alexandra. I am live again. Oh, I got crazy with my blush. I just went and put some makeup on. Okay. What's up? What's up? I'm Alexandra. I'm founder of Life with Herpes. I have been talking about herpes publicly since 2017, which feel like sometimes it feels very recent and other times it feels like, mm, like, it's been a while I've been talking about this. So anyways, I was diagnosed with herpes in 2011, genital HSV-2, um, and then I was diagnosed with oral herpes HSV-1 in 2003. So I've been living with herpes for a long time, and it was in 2017 is when I decided to finally go public about it because I realized that I could support people and help people um, when it came to living with herpes and learning to cope and dealing with the diagnosis and dealing with dating and outbreak prevention and disclosing to partners as well as um, as well as you know natural ways to prevent outbreaks versus taking the antiviral lots of things going you know lots of different things that we can do to help prevent outbreaks so this is your opportunity here for you to ask your questions i like to go live daily so that i can answer your questions yesterday there was like maybe a hundred questions I didn't get to and I felt so bad that I didn't get to them. I was trying to go one by one by one by one um, just to get through them. So um, anyways, I will answer your questions best I can. Also, if you are new, if you're just tuning in, you're like, what are we talking about if this is new? I do post a lot of content um, on on TikTok here where daily I am answering your questions or doing a lot of educational videos. So um, definitely you can you can comment on them and that it'll help me either create more content like that or content that you like, or I will reply to your question there if I didn't get to it here. So that's another way to get a hold of me is by commenting on those videos um, just because that's where it's at. So recently in the last couple of days, you guys have been asking me a lot about lysine and do I take supplements, do I eat high lysine foods, what do I do, um, how does it really help me prevent outbreaks, things like that. So lysine is, lysine is an essential amino acid, it's a protein that, um, it's a protein that, hey, it's a protein that we need to consume in foods to help with, um, yeah, I know my blouse, I know it's, but if I, see, look, if I do that, I think it looks funny. What do you think, does that look weird? If I do that too much, does that look really, see, I feel like that looks too conservative. What do you think? I think it looks better like this. I think that looks better. Maybe not. <laughs> open it, yeah. Okay, so anyways, back to lysine. Yeah, open it, cool. Okay, so back to, it looks better buttoned. You guys think, okay, I need one more comment to sway it because I have one button and one open. So one more comment to sway it. Looks better buttoned. All right, that was three buttoned. Button. Okay, all the iron it. I know, well, it's linen, so it gets all, it gets all, leave it over. You guys, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's linen, so it just gets all wrinkled. I was just cuddling with my little boy in his bed. So, um, anywho, Okay, so open it. Okay, open it. I'll open it again. You guys are funny. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, totally open it and get more people. You guys are funny. One more. No, I'm not gonna go one more button. Okay, anyways, back to lysine. Um, it looks more relaxed open, okay. So back to lysine, it's an essential amino acid. Um, team's open for the win. You guys are so funny. <laughs> um, okay, so but back to herpes, back to lysine. So lysine is an essential amino acid that we consume in our diet and we can also get it from supplements, which is basically supplements to our daily diet. Nice teeth, thank you. So um, you take lysine, that's awesome. I'm beautiful, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, lysine is, is really, really helpful because basically what lysine does, it helps block the arginine, which the arginine fuels the herpes virus. The herpes virus needs arginine in order to replicate, in order to basically stay alive. And so um, by taking lysine, it helps block it. It's basically the herpes virus worst enemy. Um, it hates lysine. 
So by adding lysine to our diets, we can then help with potentially uh, herpes outbreaks or lessening the longevity of herpes outbreaks. Um, it also is something that, um, I, I was trying to think, what did I talk about in my video today? It's something that I will take my supplements. For example, if I'm gonna go eat something that's really high in lysine, like let's say for example, I eat a peanut butter chocolate cake, like that's full of, that's full of arginine, that's like a herpes outbreak, like let me have one, like give me a herpes outbreak while I'm eating it. I will then also take lysine um, either before or after it so that I can at least help negate it and then I'll be a little bit more careful throughout the rest of the day realizing like I did really high arginine foods, let me eat some cleaner foods, let me drink plenty of water and hopefully get that out of my system. Am I married? I am married. I've been married for since 2017. Um, can you take lysine without herpes or prevent or help preventing getting herpes? You know, I haven't seen any studies on that. Lysine is a protein. Again, it's something we consume. So um, I, don't, I don't know. That would be a really great question. I don't think there's a lot of studies on that, unfortunately. Um, but I would say, why not? I mean, I'm not a doctor. I can't prescribe, but why not try it? You know what I mean? Like, it might be really helpful if you're trying to prevent the transmission. Hey, does my collagen jade both amino acids should I stop using it? Aid. Oh, okay. So I have heard that collagen is is high in arginine. Um, the gelatin actually is is high in arginine. Again, arginine is something that we need. So it's something that we need to consume. Our herpes virus. It does feel a herpes virus. Um, but looking at that I would say potentially try and negate it with adding more lysine to your diet, whether it is a supplement or whether it is consuming more foods. So um, I would see, are you getting a couple questions to ask yourself whether we're talking about collagen or whether we're talking about chocolate? I was just sorry, I have some chocolate right here in my cabinet. Whether we're talking about um, peanuts, nuts, other foods that can really trigger herpes outbreaks. What works for you? What doesn't work for you? Are there certain foods that are triggering it? Are you eating tons and tons and tons of chocolate, for example, and you're like, oh, I had no idea that's gonna trigger a herpes outbreak and I'm eating too much chocolate. Maybe let me cut it out for a couple days or cut back on it and see if that helps. Um, I was talking about this on our Monday call. You know, there um, was a girl in our group, she was in college at the time, so she was eating a ton of peanut butter because she was like, well, I'm in college, it's what I can afford, it's easy, whatever and um, she didn't realize that it was actually causing a herpes outbreak. She still eats peanut butter now, but not every meal, you know what I mean? So back to you and your collagen question or other questions that we may have about eating high arginine foods, see what works for you and if it's causing outbreaks, maybe try and cut back a little bit and see if that helps. Um, why, why, why do people have herpes and no symptoms or flare-ups? So it's very common for most people to be asymptomatic, meaning they don't have herpes outbreaks. And that's most people have that. Most people don't actually get outbreaks. So lucky them, right? Um, especially those of us that deal with herpes outbreaks. But, but um, why is that? I don't know. I mean, it's just the way that their body is handling it. It means their immune system is operating. It means that their body has figured out how to figure out the teeter-totter when it comes to um, not getting outbreaks. Can you take lice? Oh, I already answered your question. Uh, da, 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 da. Hello. Oops. What foods will encourage an outbreak? So arginine, anything that's high in arginine will, will, um, arginine will encourage the herpes outbreaks. Foods that are high in arginine are nuts, specifically peanuts, which are not nuts. Sometimes some seeds like um, sun, sunflower seeds that can be high in arginine. Um, Foods that are processed, that are hard for our body to digest, can also trigger it. Um, I would stay away from, you know, anything that's sugary, like chocolate chip cookies or anything that's sugary, breaded, things like that. Um, the cleaner that your diet, the cleaner or the less likely we are to get herpes outbreaks. Um, so chocolate, caffeine, coconut, all those can trigger herpes outbreaks. So sweets have high arginine in them. Yeah, sweets are. As we know, sweets are not good for us, right? Like we all know that, like sugar's not good for us, that's nothing new. 
Um, but it's it's a matter of, doesn't mean you can't have a cookie. It means you doesn't mean you can't have a Haagen-Dazs ice cream. It doesn't mean any of that. It means that you need to learn to eat it in balance or in moderation. So I eat chocolate every single day, but I don't eat chocolate. I eat like a little bit of chocolate after each meal. Well, not breakfast, but I have chocolate after each meal. It's something that I really enjoy and it makes me happy, so I do it. Um, Do certain body washes cause outbreaks? I don't know if they can trigger it. Well, I mean, they can be harsh on our body. There's a lot of body washes that are synthetic that just have like not natural ingredients and they can, you know, potentially cause irritation. I have heard other subject, but people talking about body washes triggering um, like bacterial vaginosis, BV, so that can trigger it in some people. Um, you know, we absorb of 70% of what we put on our skin, so it is our largest organ that absorbs things. So I like to be careful. I like to go organic. I like to go natural. Um, perfect segue. I didn't necessarily mean to talk about it, but that's why we have our Reviver soap, and this is um, this is what we created. It took over a year to create, to formulate, and it is... It smells yummy. There's eucalyptus, there's peppermint, there's natural ingredients. It's made here in the United States. This also will help with herpes outbreaks. It'll also help with the pain. Um, At least it does for me. You don't have to have a herpes outbreak to have this. You can use it all over your body or use it directly on the outbreak, whichever you prefer. Um, I use it. My son uses it. My husband uses it. Um, So you don't have to have an outbreak to use it. But I think that's personally the best. What are the chances of passing herpes? Um... What are the chances of passing herpes? Um, So that's such a loaded question and I really hesitate a lot of times answering it because I don't want us to get caught up in this like, well, I only have a 4% chance a day or I only have a 10% chance a day or I have a 3% chance a day or I have a 20% chance a day. Um, I will get into that in a second, but but I want us really to realize that you know, it's kind of like a crapshoot. You know, you can do, you can be, you can do some things to prevent transmission to your partner and your partner never get it or your partner get it. You can do nothing and your partner never gets it. You know, it's, it's really a crapshoot and it has a lot to do on your partner's immune system. So the higher your partner's immune system is, um, the less likely your partner is going to get herpes. So you can do everything, but also if your partner needs to also help you and meet halfway, you know? So um, for my, for example, when I got genital HSV2, I had a back BV, I had a yeast infection, I had a lot of infections going on um, down there. And so my body was a shot, like it couldn't take another antibiotic, it was shot, it didn't have a way to protect it. So I think those are some things to, to look at. I read different statistics about shedding, I read just different statistics about chances um, the most recent ones I've, I've kind of come across, and again, I want you to take this with a grain of salt. Doesn't mean that this it's gonna be this or not this, but typically if you are a male with herpes, with a non-herpes female, you don't have an outbreak, you're not on the antiviral and you're not using a condom, you have a 10% chance of transmitting herpes. Flip side, if you're a herpes female with a non-herpes male, no condom, no outbreak, no, um, antiviral, you have a 4% chance of transmitting herpes. Now, this all changes based on do you have genital HSV1 or oral or genital HSV2. You're more likely to transmit genital HSV2 than you are genital HSV1. There's a lot of moving parts in this. So again, are you taking the antiviral? That's going to be a really big thing. The antiviral is FDA proven to help lessen the transmission rate. Are you taking your lysine? Oh, here's my lysine. You know, are you taking your lysine? And is that also going to help you? It's going to help with the herpes virus. It's going to help keep it out of replication mode. So when the herpes virus isn't replicating, you're less likely to transmit it. So there's a lot of moving parts. I think that we just need to be aware that we have herpes. We need to communicate this with our partner and our partner just needs to be accepting of it or not accepting of it. If our partner's not accepting of the fact that we have herpes, that's okay, right? They're not the right partner for us. It was a long question. Did I answer that for you? Also, guys, thank you for the hearts. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. If this information that I'm sharing really resonates with you or you're like, gosh, I have, 
I know someone that this would really support, definitely share this information with them, share this content with them. I do have a lot of educational content over there um, on my regular feed and it's there so we can educate everybody. So thank you. Why not a daily antiviral? That There's a lot of people that take antivirals daily. Um, I did for a number of years. It's something I got to the point in my life I didn't wanna be taking a quote unquote drug daily. And that was just where I was at this at that point in my life. Um, there's other points in my life where I was like, I just, I, I can't deal with it, I need to take it. Um, just recently, in this last fall, about a year ago, I was getting lots of outbreaks and I'm like, I can't handle another one, I just need to go on it. Um, what about coffee? So the coffee bean can potentially cause herpes outbreaks. It's high in arginine. It's not the caffeine per se. The caffeine does lower our immune systems though, but the coffee bean is high in arginine. You got a form of herpes in your right out eye for like 14 years. Is it is it HSV? Is it like herpes simplex or is it a different herpes virus? There's like hundreds of herpes viruses. So there's lots of different viruses. My friend was kidnapped By memes, I don't understand. Am I streaming on multiple apps? No, I'm just on TikTok right now. Let's see, I'm just going through them. There's just, I don't know, I'm, I'm taking them as they come. Um, are you still contagious being asymptomatic? That's a really great question. Yes, you can be asymptomatic. I mean, you can be contagious even though you're asymptomatic. So there's this thing still called viral shedding. Just because you don't get outbreaks doesn't mean that the virus isn't still shedding in our bodies. Um, when that happens, the, viral, the, the, the virus sheds its viral DNA and it pops up to the surface of our skin. So um, that can look like or feel like nothing to us. So the people that are our hosts, we don't know what's happening. There's no tingle, there's no itch. There's no blister, there's no symptoms. Actually, 70% of transmissions occur during um, viral, like without an outbreak. What age did you find out I had it? I was 20 and 28. So 20 for oral herpes and 28 for genital herpes. You don't think tr a food triggers yours, but stress does. Yeah, stress is a huge trigger for a lot of people. For me, it's also lack of sleep. That's also a big trigger for me was I have, when I have lots of sleep. What's my zodiac sign? I'm a Sag, I'm a Sagittarius. Um, have you known someone getting HSV2 on the finger? Haven't seen internet info on it. I have seen or have known people that have herpetic whitlow, which is herpes on their finger. Um, typically it's HSV1 just because we use our fingers a lot more. Um, but yeah, it is possible to get it on your, on your HSV2 on your fingers as well. Isn't it different between HSV1 and HSV2? So people think that it's the same and it's not. So they are different types of the same virus, I guess you could say. So they are herpes, HSV1 and HSV2 um, basically do the same thing. HSV1 is far, far, far more common. More people have HSV1. Two out of three people have HSV1 and one out of six have HSV2. I wouldn't say that they're different. I actually would put them in the same category. Um, they do the exact same thing and they cause outbreaks and it's, they both can be sexually transmitted, um, so I would say that. Am I a dermatologist? I am not a dermatologist. I am just someone who has been living with herpes for about two decades, and I've made it something that I have become an expert in. Um, how can I help a current outbreak? I would recommend getting plenty of sleep, drinking plenty of water. I would add lysine and monolaurin to your diet or supplements. I would definitely take lysine supplements, and I would add monolaurin which is another supplement. Um, I would try to have like lay off the argin high arginine foods, and um, I would use if you want to take the antiviral. It's if it's prescribed to you by your doctor, then go on ahead and take that. Or otherwise, you could use some more natural ways to prevent or to help speed up the healing. I personally, this is my favorite. I like the body wash. It's or not body wash. It's the everyday wellness oil. It's something that has tea tree oil, has citrus oils, um, and also can help, just basically helps with inflammation, helps with wound healing. This is your guys' personal favorite, um, and I have this all linked for you. Like again, I like this, this is what you guys like to use. You apply it directly to your outbreak. You can just rub it on, so um, yeah, it's helpful. And yeah, no, I'm not, 
streaming on multiple apps. So I don't know. Maybe this is just where the questions are coming through. I don't know. They're, this is how they're coming on my end. And thank you for the hearts, you guys. I appreciate them. Both your parents have herpes and it was not passed to your sister or yourself. Yeah, it's very, very, like, it's, you can definitely avoid transmitting it um, if you're aware that you have it. Thank you for the follows also. I appreciate that. Do I take the antiviral daily? I do not. Um, I don't take it daily. I used to, but I don't. I feel like lysine gave you an outbreak. Um, it's not supposed to. It's supposed to help uh, prevent the replication of the virus. It actually blocks the arginine. Um, it shouldn't give you an outbreak. Yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. You've heard that up to 70% of people have HSV and are asymptomatic 100% of the time. So I would say up to 80% of the people have herpes, whether it's oral or genital. Um, I wouldn't say they're asymptomatic 100% of the time. I would say that majority of the people are asymptomatic. 90% of the people with genital herpes will never be diagnosed. They don't even know they have it, and that's why it just keeps getting transmitted. Um, so yeah, majority of the population has herpes, whether they want to believe it or not. If you take a drug test, would it show up on the test whether you are symptomatic or asymptomatic? Um, no, not a drug test um, or an antibody test. I think what you might mean is antibody. So if you take the antibody test, which is looking for the antibodies in your blood, it does not tell you if you're asymptomatic or, not, or symptomatic, nor does it tell you the location in which you have it. So it would just tell you you have HSV1 or HSV2. It doesn't tell you where you have it. So there's a lot of people, why that's important to know, there's a lot of people that go, oh, I just got my results back for HSV1. I obviously have cold sore, I get cold sores. It doesn't mean that you might have genital HSV1. Most drug tests test more than just drugs. Interesting, I didn't know that. If some people have it, why haven't a cure been found yet? Um, from my understanding, it's a very difficult virus to find a cure to, basically, because it's not, the way the viral DNA chain, I don't know, I actually don't know what I'm talking about on that. It's just a very difficult virus in order for people to find a cure to it. One of the reasons that I can recall is, unlike other viruses where it's like, it goes into your body, it does A, B, C on day one, X, Y, Z on day two, like it has a, a life cycle, the herpes virus, you can be introduced to it today and not get your first outbreak till, you know, 10 years from now. So it, it definitely is something that's different in each person's body. So the example that I was told or the quote I read when I was trying to research this was, it's like shooting blank in the dark. Like you just don't, you can't, you don't know what you're trying to get after. Is it safer to take antivirals or, or is the transmission the same? Uh, FDA says it is going to be a less less transmission if you um, are on the antivirals. So that's what the FDA says. Um, you're welcome. Let's see. Can you have it on your hands that can consider as a rash? You can get herpetic whitlow, which is um, on, it can be on your fingers. It would be a rash. Um, you'd have to have that diagnosed. Um, arginine, oh, gold bond is really great for outbreaks. That's good to know. Yeah, I've not tried that, but that's great to know. I think it probably dries it out. Arginine is, is in all meats and dairy products too. How do you avoid arginine? You can't and you shouldn't. It's an important essential acid, amino, essential amino acid for you. You do need it. It's something you need to live and survive. It's great for your cardiovascular health. It also improves your, your um, athletic performance. It's something that you do need. But what we can do is eat low arginine, high lysine, or supplement with lysine. Um, all right, guys. I feel like I've got, thank you for all the hearts. I feel like I got through all the questions. Um, I appreciate you. Thanks for spending your afternoon with me. Keep asking your questions. You can always comment on my videos as well. I do go through, I do reply to those. I do make follow-up videos to those. So let me know how I can um, just keep supporting you on your journey with herpes. All right, I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye, guys.